All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And quick disclaimer, I've already heard this recording thanks to my father-in-law who said he grew up listening to Paul Harvey on the radio, his short stories, all of that during his lunch break. This is absolutely insane how accurate his prediction was way back in 1965 in regards to the world we, we would be living in today. This is 30 years before I was even born, and it's very similar to George Orwell's 1984 book, Wild. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington, and then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Wow. Paul Harvey, God rest his soul. I don't care how many times you hear that straight up goosebumps, y'all. Little creepy how shockingly accurate this was. Made in 1965 and right on the money in regards to the world that we see today, the society flooding the streets today in 2023. People got everything cattywampus these days. Just seriously take a gander and look around you. Just take a step back and view it from a, a broader lens. Celebrities and, and entertainers openly worshiping and idolizing Satan. You got people thinking that they're genders that they're not and attempting to create and add to the list of, of, of more than two genders, although that'll never change. God got it right the first time, male and female. Even worse, though, they're trying to lure our kids into these disgusting false identities and, and ideologies and, and start mutilating their bodies and promote that as OK, affirm them and say, yeah, yeah, little Johnny, yeah, little Susie, you could do this. You could be whatever you want in the world and there's no repercussions down the line. 
You got to be kidding me. Like, this is horrible. There's no self-control for lust and pervasive desires. We got our borders wide open here in the United States. Drugs, guns, uh, and kids are illicitly sold behind the scenes and in the wide open. And then when documentaries like Sound of Freedom come out, they try to say, oh, that's extreme. That's not going on. Yes, it is. What we see today is pure evil and wickedness. And they're trying to lie to us and promote evil is good. And they want us to think that what has always been valued as good is, is somehow now bad. But yet everything these radical secularists want is fair game. They're trying to de-Christianize America, y'all. That's the goal. And it's, it's not going to end well for them if they don't reach repentance and turn to Christ. Because Satan, you may not have known this, but I'm here to give you the good news and kind of the bad news if you don't turn and reach repentance. Uh, Satan's only plans for you, hello, are to kill, steal, and destroy. The only plan he has in longevity for your life is death. So if you keep waging sin, it's not going to end good for you. But the Bible told us, that it warned us. Paul did, Jesus did. The Bible, time and time again, tells us exactly what's going to happen. And we're living in biblical times now. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 through 5 says, For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They will turn away from hearing the truth the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, and they'll turn aside to myths. But as for you, exercise self-control in everything. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. If you've been saved, if you've confessed Christ as Lord and Savior, and you have eternal salvation. But a lot of people, they don't know what they don't know. They buy into the propaganda. They buy into what the media tells them and when they try to fan the flames. And, you know, they may be consumed by drugs and alcohol and just... False identities, not truth. You need to speak the truth in love to these people. Philippians 3 verse 18 through 21 says, For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. And they are focused on earthly things, things that are passing away. Can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse, can't take none of this stuff with you. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. Ephesians 5, verse 1 through 15. This is a long one, but we're on a roll, and there's nothing more true than Scripture. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For no one recognized this. Every sexual, immoral, or impure, or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners, for you were once darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. For what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up, sleeper, and rise up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So when you feel like you're being tempted, when you feel like you're going to lose, take heart. Jesus already won for us. When you look to Christ, when you put all your trust and allow him to guide your steps day in and day out, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, you're going to be persecuted by people of this world, but in the long run, it'll all be worth it. These people are going to get what's coming to them if they don't reach repentance. I'm telling you right now. Take heart, put on the full armor of God and go out there and stand in righteousness. Use discernment and know what you can and can't get involved with. And that's critical. So we can continue to witness the good news of Jesus Christ. Pay close attention. Always be on guard. And let us remember that no matter what's going on in the world, that the gospel isn't about what we can do for Jesus, but what Jesus has already done for us. So we got to tell these kids that are being lied to and people that, you know, they just haven't been exposed to the truth, the, the saving grace 
of Jesus Christ. We got to tell this generation that so social justice and, and being woke, even at its best, even if it did have great intentions, it doesn't even come close to the gospel. Never has, never will. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Perfection and the ultimate example of humility. God humbled himself to be like man and then took on all the evil, the mocking, the shame, the sin in the world, bore it on himself on that cross and then beat it, beat death, was resurrected. The best truth to ever happen to this earth, the best chance and the way out of death and eternal darkness and punishment, all you got to do is look to Jesus. Then that Holy Spirit that Christ gave us is in you when you've been saved. Like I, nothing in this world, no, no woman, man, riches, fame, notoriety, fa none of this stuff can give you what Jesus Christ can. So 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on the alert, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. That's the solution to all this. People can say whatever cunning and, and deceiving words that they want to, but you know the truth. Stand in that, live in that. Don't buy into what any of these people are saying. Love them, season your speech with salt, try to guide them to reach that repentance and, and, and find the kingdom. But at the end of the day, I mean, people make their own choices. God gave us free will. So if they want to persist in this sin, th that's on them. I feel bad for them. I, I truly do. But for a long time, we've known what's to come and it's here. So what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I pray y'all do as well. But this was more of an eye opener for those of you guys that, that don't believe that this has been foretold long before my time, long before your time, the Bible to Paul Harvey to George Orwell. All of this is, is been seen coming if that makes any sort of sense. But I know when I can't speak proper English, it's probably time to wrap it up. So let me know what you guys think down below. Again, God bless Paul Harvey and his short stories. I'm definitely going to check out more of them because this is the only one I've heard up to this point. Let me know which one I should do next down below in the comments. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. Just in case YouTube forgets to let you know, I appreciate you. I love y'all for doing so. If you want to take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here you want to show a little extra love and support by no means do you have to but you can get awesome designs like this confidence knowing i can't but he can these designs are made over my wife's etsy store by her customized in-house all of that insulated tumblers petite teat small sizes to big big and hefty for the 5x folks out there all different sizes and colors like i said we don't discriminate we appreciate y'all it goes a very long way and allowing me to continue to do what i do all my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rant at you. I just, I just love y'all so much and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed, I'm gone.